reminded of um, is that that polling remains an incredibly difficult uh, art and science. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were surprised to see that um, in in many of the states and in, in some of the down ballot races, the the results were as close as they were because the polls indicated, you know, once again, deja vu um, that. Uh, these races would not be as competitive. So, um, you know, I think we we continue, we, we, we will continue and we should continue to view, um, view the polls with a little bit of skepticism. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the lesson here is that polls tend to reflect who uh, people expect to vote. Um, what they always, what, 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 what they miss and what they missed in 2016 and what they missed this year. Um, are new voters who maybe hadn't been engaged in the process before. Um, so being mindful of um, both you know, that blind spot within the polling, but also how can we engage more folks in the polls? How can we, or how can we engage more people in the process? How can we make sure that the Teamsters are um, involved in the process, are being included um, in ev every step um, from, uh, from from volunteering to making phone calls to voting on election day um, and just making sure that as many of our members are as active in the process throughout the process as possible. Rail teams just were also involved in reaching out specifically to their own members so they could talk about issues that pertain to them. Jeff Joins, National Director of the Government Affairs for the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division, or BMWED said the effort was successful. When you're talking about issues uh, that are important uh, to railroaders uh, or, you know, if it's truck drivers or, or, or whatever the issue is that, that's important to uh, each um, section that, that, that make up the uh, Teamsters, uh, it's important to have somebody on the other line that uh, relates to those issues and uh, that are, are, are able to uh, talk through those issues, you know, if, if somebody wants to engage in a conversation like that on the other end. And so, uh, you know, that's why we thought it was important that, that we reach out to our guys because uh, there are uh, issues that affect railroaders that don't necessarily affect other labor uh, members or, and there's, you know, uh, so, so those specific items, uh, I think that, uh, it was good to have member-to-member uh, uh, -member conversations on that and why it's important to uh, uh, back the candidates that we backed. To get a true sense of what it was like to be involved in the program, however, I turned to several PFOs in different top-tier states who gave the lowdown on how they got involved and what it was like to participate. Brian Bespiati, a local 769 member and UPS feeder driver, said worries about the future of unions motivated him. Well, labor unions have been clearly under attack for a lot of years, but but never more so than these past four years. And just watching the Supreme Court nominations, and while those justices have conservative views and, and seem to be pushed forward for those reasons, they clearly are allies of corporations. And, and it's clear why a businessman in the White House would want those justices in their positions. So the appointments at the NLRB, you know, all those things factored in, but it was clear when, when Joe Biden became the nominee that we had to get behind Joe and, and support someone who truly understood our issues and who's been an ally for many years. Several of those who worked as PFO said they felt they made a difference. David Pumphrey, a local 299 member and a USF Holland driver and shop steward, said there was a need to educate the membership. Believe it or not, people weren't, a lot of people weren't up on exactly what was going on. Um, you tell them the background um, of the people that's running, uh, what can be done for you if this person's elected versus the other person being elected. And I think that sometimes once that stuff was laid out to them, the, they knew exactly what to do and Michigan came out triumphant. Sabrina Tate, a local 71 member and UPS driver, said she was able to assist a member who was disabled and had no way to get to the polls. I do believe I was able to, through the scripted format, but with the scripted format, I was, you know, we were also allowed to um, inject our own uh, opinion and try to help people 
uh, along in their decision process. And I do believe uh, we influenced, I influenced personally uh, quite a few people to either go from no to maybe, and then some no to yes, I will get out and vote. I was very helpful with a lot of people that just simply did not know where to go. And since they were working and I was off the job as a PFO, I was able to, I would have the, uh, the website pulled up for, to where I could just put in their information from the, the scripted information that we were given and plug in their address and let them know where they needed to go vote because they simply did not know. So I believe that that was a very positive impact for a lot of people. Uh, they just simply needed the information and because they were working, they didn't have the opportunity to do the, uh, the research to find out where they needed to vote for various different reasons, whether or not they moved, uh, whether or not they just didn't know. And um, we did uh, help one Teamster that uh, was off the job for a disability and we were able to help him simply get to the polls. And I believe it was a very positive impact. Tom Steinbrenner, a BMW ED Lodge 1490 member, and the Minnesota Legislative Director said all of the conversations with members were valuable, even if it didn't seem so at the time. Well, I definitely feel like the all the effort that uh, all all of us uh, state legislative directors put in definitely helped. Even if even if there was conversations that didn't necessarily go our way, the people that we had those conversations with would go and tell their friends and family about the you know I had to talk to Tom today about this guy and even the bad conversations carried forward. So every everything we did, every conversation you have, or every, you know, any, anything you talk about does make a difference. It does, in, it does inspire thought and it doesn't, and it ultimately people will see, or our membership will see the way, you know, the way that is gonna work out for them. And, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of the work that, uh, the Teamsters did and, uh, and that I did in, for in this last election cycle, and I look forward to the next one. And for some, it was just plain emotional. Local 200 member, Twin McLean, said the exceptional effort put in from local 200 Secretary Treasurer Tom Bennett on down through the membership led to a victory in Wisconsin that really touched him. I had tears of joy. Like, there's, there's no better feeling than knowing you were a part of something, especially something successful. So for me, um, when they started making the announcements and the drops, I'm sitting inside local 344 with just tears of joy in my eyes. And a lot of people looking at me like, are you okay? And I'm like, I think a lot of people in the room don't know what we accomplished. Cause you know, like for us, when you sit inside of a room for say seven to 12 hours, just making calls, it, it like people don't know, it, it wears and tears on your body. Cause like after we was all done, I didn't wanna look at my phone for two days. Taken all together, the Teamsters 2020 election effort shows what can be done with this union when this union comes together. And it's a victory the membership and all working Americans will be benefiting from for the next four years. Workplace safety is a top concern for truckers and other workers as the coronavirus pandemic enters the cold weather months, driving up cases. So to get the most up-to-date information, Teamster Safety and Health Deputy Director Anjali DeGrasse sat down with Jennifer Lincoln, a health scientist with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health Division of Safety Research, to find out how these essential workers can protect themselves. Hi, Teamster Nation, and thank you for listening in today on the safety and health segment of the Teamster podcast. For the past few episodes, we have enjoyed having speakers from NIOSH, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, 
We appreciate their partnership with us in providing this timely information on COVID-19. Today, we have Jennifer Lincoln, a health scientist with the Division of Safety Research. Jennifer is a recognized subject matter expert on transportation safety and will be speaking with us today on the topic of occupational risk and COVID in the transportation industry. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Anjali. Today we will dis discuss CDC guidance about COVID-19 risk levels and mitigation strategies for workers in the transportation industry. This is coming from questions received from trucking and warehousing stakeholders, such as truck drivers, about industry guidance and general CDC guidance developed for businesses, employers, and workers. Our understanding of COVID-19 continues to improve. Current research suggests that COVID-19 is mainly spread from person to person among people who are in close contact with one another, which is about six feet. This is the, this type of spread, which occurs by respiratory droplets, which people produce when they cough, sneeze, or even talk. People can be infected but not have symptoms and likely play a role in the spread of COVID-19. The virus could also spread when people touch surfaces or objects that have the virus on them and then touch their eyes, nose, or mouth. Though this is probably less common, the virus can remain on surfaces such as door handles, dashboards, and gear shifts for hours to days. It is important to clean visibly dirty surfaces and then disinfect them to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 and other viral respiratory illnesses. As the COVID-19 pandemic persists throughout the United States, how can you reduce your risk in high-risk areas? That's a great question, Anjali. There is ongoing risk of COVID-19 exposure throughout the United States. Trucking and parcel delivery employers should know about the COVID-19 risks in areas where your employees may travel. The more cases in the area, the greater the risk for employees to contract COVID-19. Employers and employees can find information on cases in an area through the CDC COVID data tracker. Anyone contracting the virus while at work can pass the virus to coworkers, family, and the public, even if they do not have symptoms. Some governments are requiring extra requirements, such as wearing a face mask and requiring those who recently traveled to quarantine for 14 days. Employers should know the requirements and give them to employees before they hit the road. Truckers and parcel delivery drivers should be aware of high-risk activities, such as getting gas or food, taking bathroom breaks, or staying at hotels and how to stay safe. Some of these protections may include requiring masks, promoting social distancing, contactless payment options, and having enhanced cleaning procedures. Employers should encourage employees to follow behaviors that will protect them, including avoid close contact with coworkers, customers, and the general public. Wear a cloth mask, wash their hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds before eating and after using the bathroom, after visiting a rest stop, after getting gas, after picking up or making a delivery, and when they get home or to a hotel. Employees should have hand sanitizer in their vehicle with at least 60% alcohol to use after returning to the vehicle and products to disinfect frequently touched surfaces. To reduce risks while traveling, truck drivers and parcel delivery employees can bring food and water for their trip. Okay, that sounds like good tips to have. Um, what individuals would you say are at higher risk of health complications from COVID-19? We do recognize that some employees are at higher risk. As an essential worker who is interacting with the public regularly, you are at risk of potentially interacting with an individual with COVID-19 and bringing that virus back to your coworkers, customers, and family. Older adults and people with underlying health conditions such as type 2 diabetes, serious heart conditions, obesity, or COPD are at higher risks of ser serious illness from COVID-19, with adults 85 and older at the highest risk of severe illness from COVID-19. Severe illness means that a person with COVID-19 may require hospitalization, intensive care, or a ventilator to help them breathe. Workers at increased risk and those who live with them who are also at increased risk should consider their risk level when going out and ensure they are taking steps to protect themselves. Consider avoiding or limiting activities where social distancing cannot be maintained. Wear a mask and wash your hands regularly for at least 20 seconds with soap and water after you interact with others. 
your risk of getting and spreading COVID-19 increases when you're in.